top, but I don't think we must. I think a baby wildebeest coming through here could easily be her target. I don't know if any of them have seen her. I don't know why they're all coming through here either. But something spooked them there, a few coming closer to her. She could have any of them. She's spoilt for choice. Let's just watch the wind is blowing, which of course makes it much easier for her. I mean, they cannot be more than maybe 30 meters from her. I'm going to move quickly, Dave. Let's see if we can. Dave is on camera, everybody. She's in there somewhere. We're going to keep watching carefully. Okay, there she is. She could easily run from there. Look at her ears and you'll just be able to see them running past. It's like she doesn't know which one to go for. There's so many. All streaming through. This is a... Oh, here we go. It's a drainage line that they're all struggling to get through. There's some very steep banks streaming down. Come on, girl. Look how many there are. And I'm quite, I'm often in favor of the prey getting away, but today I'm not because she looks like a relatively hungry lioness in comparison with most of the cats here. You happy with this picture, Dave? It's not the best. Shall I go back a bit? Better, better back. Okay, how about that? They've got no idea that she's there. Oh, and they're coming streaming through. She's not more than here. Yeah, there she goes. She's struck. There she goes. Up onto a little one. She's got a small zebra. I'm going to go back a bit. No small wildebeest. There it is. You got it, Dave? That is not a small one. That's an adult. She's on her own. The mass of the two animals is about the same, but she is much more limber. She's much more supple. She's much more powerful. And I don't think that that wildebeest has a chance. Isn't this just astounding stuff? Completely live from the Massamara. I can't believe this. Well done, you clever lion. That wildebeest is probably one year and seven months old. Born last year into its second migration. Unfortunately, almost certainly, it's last. Oh, look at this. Fantastic stuff. You can send us any questions or comments that you have. I'll happily answer them. But that is just breathtaking, breathtaking action, and it was totally unexpected. She's been watching a herd of hundreds of thousands on the plains behind. Something spooked this group. They came from the other side of the drainage line, and she picked it up immediately, got behind that bush, and wham, she picked her target. And that wildebeest is very much alive, and I know that for some of you this will be very difficult. I find it quite difficult to watch, I must say. But for her, I'm very pleased, because she was looking a very skinny lioness. And the power, the speed, it's still alive. She must watch out. It could easily get up from there. I just want to see if it's breathing. The reason that the picture is moving slightly is that they're quite far away from us, probably about, I'd say, 100 meters, 330 feet or so. Now, Sinak, you're wondering how strong her jaws are. It's difficult to answer. You see that wildebeest is still alive, slowly starting to get air back into its lungs, and she's going to have to take hold of it soon. Sinak, a human being bites apparently with the power, I think it's about 80 pounds per square inch. A lioness, probably around 200 or 300 pounds per square inch, I think. I can't remember exactly. And she's so easily recognizable. Look at her you can see her right ear is torn the top is torn off and all around now you can hear the zebras alarming wah, 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 wah. they know there's a lion there they've just watched this kill the same as you and I have there we go see got up again the brain gets starved of oxygen and then the autonomic nervous system kicks in it starts to suck in air the brain starts to reoxygenate and then it tries to get up again and now she'll suffocate it again and I'm afraid it doesn't have a chance so if this is difficult for you to watch I'm very sorry about that Whew. 
Oh, very exciting. Can you hear all the zebra around here? Their calls echoing through the trees here on this drainage line in amongst the wind of an incoming storm. A beautiful afternoon storm that we'll get to enjoy, but unfortunately for that wildebeest, the storm is going to fade from its sight very soon. Now, people often ask us, do lions kill in the day when they see this stuff? The answer is, during the migration, lions often kill during the day. Opportunities like this abound. They set themselves up for a dusk hunt, which is the normal time for them to hunt, and then chance occurrences like this happen. And I think what you'll find here, you're seeing the wildebeest still kicking slightly. There may just be a little bit of air passing through the trachea there, slowly making its way into the lungs and then around in the blood to the brain. And so it's just not quite dead yet. Now she's looking around because she's looking around for other lions. She can't hear because there's a huge amount of wind, so all she can hear is rustling. She'll be smelling probably hyena there are lots of hyena around here hyena won't have picked up what's going on here yet except that the alarm calling of all the zebra will definitely attract other lions and i don't know that she's on her own in this pride i think she's part of what we call the sausage tree pride but others of them are quite a long way away from here so she'll be looking around to see if this alarm calling is attracting other predators Now, Rishi, you ask a very good question. You say, why would the wildebeest not help the injured one? This is something I have wanted to know myself many, many times. Because we've watched cheetah take down wildebeest of this size. Five cheetah brothers we've watched for the last eight weeks or so. And although the wildebeest are so much bigger, they just don't make any effort, bar one instance, to help each other. And I don't really understand why it is that they don't. Because if they all turned around and had a go at this lioness, it's almost certain that she would turn and run. I'm going to try and move and get us into a slightly better position because I think she's going to drag it into the cover there. Dave, are we going to, shall we move slightly? It's so exciting, this stuff. It really is just magic that we're able to do this live from the Mara. If we do lose signal, I'm sorry, but most of the high action is done. There are more coming through now. We might see a second kill. How's that, Dave? They don't know she's there. The zebra don't know that she's there. We could see a second kill. Now, a zebra, a bit more formidable than a wildebeest. More powerful, much bigger kick, much more explosive speed. Wildebeest do not have the same kind of formidable nature. And what she'll be doing now is looking for a youngster. She could easily take a youngster. The one that's just come through slightly too big, perhaps. Oh, and the wildebeest is starting to kick, and they've seen it. They've seen the wildebeest kicking. And that's given them a fright. I think some of them have seen her. The wildebeest stopped kicking now. Now you see, they're not talkers, these creatures. They don't know how to tell each other, other than for the odd alarm call, that there's a lion there. Which means two or three will go around the other side, the rest will continue to take the path of least resistance and come down straight past her. Gosh, this is just astounding stuff. There are wilde, uh, not wildebeest, zebra shouting at each other all around here. It sounds like a convention of deranged hounds at the moment, mixed in with some donkeys. And the echoing through the trees is just quite something. All right, let's just wait and see here. I'm not sure if she'll hunt again. I'm pretty sure she will if the rest of the animals come through, but I can't see at the moment if they're coming through. Now, Ayanda, you say you hope the alarm calls don't attract hyenas. Ayanda, I, they could. But I think there's so much alarm calling that you might find that a predator will think, well, well, we don't know what's going on there. She's just going to continue now with killing this poor thing. 
It's in the death throes now. I don't think it's feeling anything at this stage. Mm, that's difficult to watch. Shana, you're wondering if she's a lone female or if she has a pride. Shana, I think she's part of what we call the sausage tree pride. I don't think she's alone, but she is today, and she has been since this morning. We watched her this morning. Had some very interesting sightings of her this morning, and this morning I said she looked very thin, and she looked like the hungriest lioness in the Mara, and I thought she would kill something. I hoped she wouldn't do it during the day when we went back to camp, and certainly she has not disappointed. Now what we're going to do is sit right here, because it is entirely possible that... reason is that these lions don't kill to eat always. Their instinct to kill is separate from their instinct to eat. We've watched lions kill seven or eight wildebeest at a time and just leave them, not eat them. And although that might seem like there's some kind of a bloodlust, I don't think it is a bloodlust, it's just the instinct to kill. And I think they find it enjoyable in the same way that a domestic cat finds chasing a ball of twine quite enjoyable. Vera, you say even though the wildebeest was wriggling, it didn't appear too distressed. Vera, it's one of the great misconceptions in animals, of course, is that because we cannot see their distress, that they don't feel it. And the reason, Vera, and I mean, I, I know exactly what you mean, the reason they don't look too distressed is that they cannot make any kind of facial expression and they cannot scream in distress like a human being can. And because of that, that's, you know, when we look at a person in distress, we can tell from the look on their face, from their body language, and from the noise that will come out of them. Same is impossible for a wildebeest. It cannot change its facial expression, but for the very slightest amount. And it also, once it's had the teeth clamped over its trachea, it cannot make any noise at all. And James, you're wondering if she's habituated. I mean, I'm assuming you mean habituated to vehicles. Yes, she is, to a certain extent. But I've got to tell you, she's not as relaxed as some lionesses I've seen. And I'm most pleased that we're able to watch her at this distance. Because if you watch her carefully, she is looking up towards us from time to time. And that means that she's not completely 100% comfortable around us. I'm not too worried because we've clearly not affected her ability to eat but I think that she is not as used to vehicles as some people, as some, not people, as some lions might be. How utterly fantastic that was. And totally unexpected, like I said, completely not the herd I thought she was going to try and hunt. I think we're going to stay right where we are, just in case something else doesn't come down this very well-worn, very well-used path. And if it doesn't, well, what she'll do is take that wildebeest into a little bit of shelter. It'll probably eat as quickly as she can, because there are a lot of hyena in this area. There are two clans that converge on this drainage line. One called the Mountain Clan, the other is called the North Clan, and they are around here all the time. Lynn, you want to know if the wildebeest is still alive? Lynn, no, I think the wildebeest is now dead. And for her, that's obviously a good thing, because if something else comes down through there, well then they're not going to see the kicking. It was the kicking of the feet that gave her away. What an astonishing thing to have behold, beheld.